Well, what's up everyone? My name is of course Tom and welcome to TechStream. Today, thanks to the guys over at Gigabyte, we're taking a look at their Aorus K9 gaming keyboard. First of all though, as always, let's roll on that intro. So as I've said, what we're looking at today is the Aorus K9 gaming keyboard from Gigabyte. The K9 is their top spec keyboard. This particular one comes in at around about £120. Um, and let's get into it. So we'll do a quick brief over what it is to start off with. Basically, it's a 104 key, so just standard sized keyboard. It is obviously mechanical. It's got lots of RGB. So we'll start off with the box. The packaging is nothing fantastic, um, but hey, it is just packaging. I'd rather they spent the money on the products and not the packaging. It does give you a little bit of information about what it is, a bit on the back, um, but basically the main parts that you get are on the front. Uh, it says here that you've got these Flaretech optical mechanical switches. It comes with a few extra keycaps and switches. You get an included switch keycap and puller. It works with RGB fusion and it is splash proof. I didn't test that, but everything else we have gone through. So if we crack open the box, we'll see just what is inside. So obviously the keyboard would be inside. You do get your keycap puller. There's a protective cover included when it's in its box. I've actually found that I've actually used this a couple of times. I've had this here for a few weeks now, and it's actually really handy if you're not using your keyboard, just to keep all the dust off. They also include with you a multi-languaged user guide, and another nice inclusion is a cheat sheet for all of the function shortcuts to do with the RGB. Quite a nice inclusion, actually. Instead of having to thumb through the user manual, here is a nice little cheat sheet. And the other thing that you get included is this little box of goodies. Now, when you buy one of these keyboards, you'll actually find that all of the black keycaps are fitted. I just had to play around and stuck some orange ones on there. But in here, we get nine keycaps. We also get nine key switches. And you're thinking, why include extra switches? Now, this particular option here is what they call the red switch. So it has the same sort of characteristics. It is not a Cherry MX red switch. It has the same characteristics though, being a linear switch, no tactile feedback or anything like that. Same sort of actuation points, same sort of pressures and things like that. The extra nine that are included are tactile clicky Cherry MX blue type switches. So you have the option of being able to change some, obviously up to nine of your switches to be the Cherry MX Blue type. And I will go through just how you do that a little bit more in a second. So yeah, you do get your nine switches. These ones basically, they cover your, your, your WAS and D, your arrow keys and your escape key with an extra orange. And like I said, there is nine extra switches that you can then swap out for anything that you fancy. You may fancy changing your WAS and D for blue switches while you have the rest as red, red type switches entirely up to you and it is really nice to see that included as an option now we'll put that lot out of the way so this is the keyboard the keyboard itself i find found was actually really quite nice we have a six foot or 1.8 meter approximately uh, braided cable which you can route either out of the left the right or the center with the cable sort of routing and hold downs all there for you and it, I actually found that once you've got it in it does a really good job it's not hard, too hard to fit in and once it's there it stays there you do also have some lift up rubber feet just to put a bit of tilt on your keyboard a couple of extras there and basically it doesn't move around my desk wobbles more than the keyboard moves as I said earlier it is full 104 key keyboard it's all addressable RGB. You can go through the Aorus RGB software to change all of that, although you can actually play around with the buttons as well, should you really wish. I do recommend the Aorus software, but more on that one later. The other thing is the Aorus logo here all lights up and does what it says. The num lock, caps lock, and scroll lock buttons, they're just white. They don't change. So the keyboard itself, as I said, 104 keys, 
There is a white Aorus logo on the front. Again, you can't change that. It is a very, very hefty 104 key keyboard. Uh, it's got a, a very strong and sturdy steel plate to it. This does not twist, bend, or creak. It is probably one of the most solid keyboards I've played with so far. It is an open frame design so that, that the keys are effectively sitting on top. And now we will take a quick look at the most interesting part of this keyboard. And that is by pulling up the keycap, which is standard for a mechanical switch, uh, switch keyboard. I've not done anything different. But then what you can do is turn this around and actually lift the switches out as well. That's why we said there's nine extras included and they are a cherry blue type switch. They're not cherry blues. And this is the switch itself. This is technically not a switch. What we have here, these are optical mechanical switches. So rather than relying on the physical making and breaking of an electrical contact as per a standard mechanical switch, what we are doing here is actually making and breaking a light beam to activate the switch. What we have here is in the actual keyboard, we've got a little white bit and a little black bit. They're probably quite hard for you to see, but here is a little white bit and a little black bit. One of these parts is the transmitter. The other part is an infrared receiver. And then on the back of the switches, there's two, well, there's actually three little holes. There's a rubber, there's a little clear hole here, which is for your RGB for it to shine through. And then there's two more holes. And again, the light goes in here and then goes out. And the act of Basically, as it stands with the key switches as they are, the light is just going in and disappearing. You press the switch down, the light is then getting bounced and going back down and being received as a key, key switch. Okay, it's a complicated way of doing it, shall we say. Quite often, things like this, the way you'll find they work is you have a light beam, you put something in the middle, and by breaking the light beam is activating the switch. This is done a little bit differently. This is done by a make the light to activate the switch. So you shine the light through, it receives light, which turns the switch on rather than canceling the light out to turn it on. A little bit confusing there, but hope you understand what I mean. These are complicated switches. These are not what I would class as a if I was to design a switch, I would just take something off the shelf. They've reinvented the wheel a little bit here with this type of switch. Um, I was a little bit dubious when I went through the info to see how it worked. It's quite complicated, but I had a play with it. And I must say, it's a really nice, strong and sturdy keyboard. It feels, it feels just like a Cherry MX Red switch. It's got apparently twice the durability. The switches are rated for something like 100 million key switches how they've come up with that number i don't know but 100 million and i must admit yeah it's really well made the light switches now i am not the best gamer in the world if i was the best gamer in the world i wouldn't be making review videos i'd be making game videos but yeah i did some gaming with it and i can't say it made me better because i ain't that good I'm not gonna lie but it definitely didn't make me worse and I definitely, it was an enjoyable experience. Now, if I was to put this in the hands of a, a pro esports player, yeah, they'd probably be able to give me a much better review on these actual switches. But I'm, I'm your casual gamer, shall we say. And as it is at £120, yeah, I really liked it. The only thing I did find is it's a bit echoey, but that is a standard, op all open frame keyboards do that. And it... You can hear sort of uh, springs vibrating in them. It's a standard open frame keyboard. They all seem to do that in theatre in an open frame design. And it's purely that there's just no plastics around the side to sort of muffle the sound. But overall, the K9 from Gigabyte was a really nice keyboard. It comes in at £120, standard 104 key keyboard and it is fully addressable RGB. Now it uses the RGB or um, RGB Fusion software from Gigabyte, and I was gonna include that in this video, but if I did that, it's gonna make this video really, really long. And I've had a few people say that they didn't like my really long videos in the past, so I'm gonna split it in half, and we're gonna do a completely separate and dedicated Aorus uh, RGB Fusion video for you all. And it's gonna cover, I've actually got a few Gigabyte products here at the moment, so we're gonna cover the RGB Fusion 
complete software, not just this keyboard, but we're going to cover it as a whole ecosystem. And I will say, if you're in the Gigabyte or ecosystem and the Aorus Fusion RGB ecosystem, this works really, really well. It all syncs up together absolutely seamless and beautifully, and I actually was quite impressed because I've normally found that component manufacturers don't make good peripheral manufacturers. And when I saw that Gigabyte had gone for something a little bit different with this one, um, I actually reviewed their M5 mouse a little while ago. And basically, they played it a little bit safe. They went with the Pixar sensor, they went with Omron switches. It's pretty much a textbook mouse. They went a little bit off the rails here with these Flatec optical switches. And I was a little bit dubious and thinking, mm, have they gone a bit too extreme? But no, it's actually worked really well. I really liked it. It's a nice keyboard, it's got a nice design. It doesn't scream too much gamer, but it's got, wow, well, it, it's everything is adjustable. So you can make it scream gamer and have it going through lots and lots of flashes like this, or you can just set it to a nice subtle tone and it looks classy. But that's what RGB is all about. It's all about personal choice. And speaking of personal choice, the one thing I will say, almost take this review with a pinch of salt. Keyboards are specific uh, things. My personal recommendation is for you to go to a physical brick and mortar shop and play with one before making your final decision. Keyboards are very personal. What one person loves, another person is going to hate. And it's purely down to personal preference. But for me, the K9 is going to get a big thumbs up. I would be quite happy to stick this on my desk and use it. Okay, it doesn't have any macro keys or anything like that, but then this type of build quality and tech and everything. If you wanted macro keys, you're looking at sort of the next one up, more money again. But there we go. So the Aorus K9 from Gigabyte, big thumbs up from Techstream. That's about it for today, guys. I'm gonna put some links as to where you can buy one of these down below. And if you have any questions, suggestions, or recommendations, leave it in the comments. I always do my best to answer. And if you've liked this video, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, thumbs down, not a problem. And don't forget, if you want to see more of me, click that subscription button, click the little notification bell, and I will be back at the same time again next week. Bye for now.